everyone and happy Sunday. Happy first part of April. You're locked in for the next hour with myself and my co-host Dr. Christy Sumner and apparently and my cat. And Gino. <laughs> there he goes. <laughs> hey Christy, how are you? I'm great Miranda. How are you doing tonight? Doing great, doing great. So uh, you know last week whenever we came to you guys we were we were also in different locations. I know Chris had just got back from West Virginia. I was located there in South Carolina. We were just coming off of two big weekends of different paranormal investigations and paranormal events. This week we're here. Christy's at the jail and uh, I'm here in my very empty house, hopefully <laughs> getting yes. up there very soon. Yes, but you met with real litters today. That's a, that's a great first last step. I did. I did. All the stuff is out of the house. Met with realtors today. Met with two. Got another meeting with a realtor. Uh, first part of the week, just wrapping a few last minute things up and uh, hopefully everything will be done by the end of the week. Mm, that's going to be awesome. Have, have you up here and we'll be able to do this podcast together at the jail and get things settled because it's been it's been a whirlwind these last couple of months. It really has. You know, we we uh, started with an abbreviated schedule in January and February. March, we went back to our normal five days a week. And then uh, now we're officially back on our five days a week, probably even adding some extra stuff. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Will we've, uh, yeah, we're trucking along. I mean, uh, April is officially completely booked up for paranormal mm -hmm. investigations, except for, I think, like a random Sunday night or maybe mm -hmm. a random... Uh, what is that? Yeah, that's Sally. So you oh. got Cheeto. I got Sally. She's down here. <laughs> <laughs> but we got a, uh, you know, random Friday night, random uh, Sunday night. But it's it's packed with paranormal investigations, guided ghost hunts, flashlight tours. We've got to get those uh, flashlight tour dates on the calendar, which mm -hmm. we'll get on there um, either tonight or, or tomorrow. We'll have those up. We don't mm -hmm. really have a lot of open dates for them. No, Actually. no, we don't because there's a lot going on. And I'm telling you, the last several paranormal investigation teams that have been here, uh, this jail has been talking. Uh, and it's just it's it's really incredible some of the stuff that some of these teams have captured. Uh, I know Joe Shortridge and his sister Jen from 222 Paranormal were here last night. And Joe did a live stream and he was talking about how he wasn't thinking he was getting a whole lot of stuff, but you know, we captured he captured two EVPs on that live stream alone. So just a lot lot of activity going on here right now. I think the storms may have helped here the last week or so, the storms that we've been having. But um, I mean, we even had a, a team here on Friday who's already booked again. They, mm -hmm. they booked yesterday to come back. So um, really, really excited about what the jail's doing and talking and the activity we've had we've had the last couple of weeks yeah, that was really cool outcast paranormal out of louisville kentucky was here mm -hmm. on friday and uh, i know they had so much activity when time was called for them to leave um they were still getting activity and so as chris said they booked a another night coming up here in may so we love our repeat offenders and and when they come <laughs> back and we can't wait to hear what they've captured these teams that have been capturing all this really cool evidence is supposed to send that to us and we love promoting them and putting it out so 
Guys, go on to our Facebook page. Check out our posts that we do every time we have a team here. We try to put their TikToks, their pages, their all of their information because these people put great content out and you can follow along on their live investigations. So go and, and show those uh, paranormal teams and content creators some support because it does go a long way for us as the jail and then also for those those different folks at the location. So um, so we've got that going on. We've also got the Blessing of the Bikes event yes. that's coming up on April 15th. We're two weeks out from that. And so, again, you know, we say this every time, kick and riding season off right with Blessing of the Bikes. The uh, That's going to be April 15th. Actually, I'll go ahead and pull that up. While mm -hmm. if you want to talk about that for a second, I'm going to go ahead and pull that up right quick. Yeah, this is going to be a great event. So if you're in the area, just stop by, have your bike blessed, uh, come by the jail. We will have it open for tours. Um, you know, you will, it, it is a paid admission to come into the jail, but the bike event is free. We'll actually have a, uh, a food truck here as well. Dean's Pit Stop will be here. They'll be serving some breakfast and also lunch options. So just come on out. Even if you're not a rider, just come on out, uh, join us, have some fellowship with some really cool motorcycle um, Christian Motorcycle Association uh, individuals and riders and come out and see the jail. It, it's really going to be a good time, I think. And we are a little bit leery of the weather, but the last couple of days, the weather looks like it's going to be beautiful on April the 15th. Just fingers crossed that that holds. Yeah, absolutely. And we've we've got special stickers. Um, they're actually really cool stickers. Yep. They're the Blessing of the Bikes logo that, uh, that I designed. It's got the uh, jail in the background there and we're really excited about these are helmet stickers. And so if you come to the blessing of the bike event and you purchase a ticket to come into the jail, you will get a free sticker with that. And then also the cool things that the uh, Christian Motorcyclists Association out of J Jacksboro, you always get a really cool little packet whenever you come and do a blessing. I think, I think you get, um, you know, you get a sticker from them. Uh, I think last year it was like a cleaning cloth that you can yep. keep with your bike and also uh, some of the their literature and stuff. And it's, it's really just a, a fun day. I mean, this is, this is going to be the second annual. We had a good turnout last year, but we're hoping to have a long line this mm -hmm. year, uh, you know, getting, getting their bikes blessed and stuff. So um, plus Dean's Diner, I can't, or I mean, Dean's Pit Stop, they used to be Dean's Diner, but I can't say enough about them. I mean, their food is tremendous. <laughs> it really is. It's tremendous. I blame them for extra weight gain. Thing. Yes, I agreed. <laughs> <laughs> but we do uh, want to so say hello to a few folks that's over here in the chat room. Thank you all so much for uh, for tuning in tonight. If you do have any questions for either us or for tonight's guest, um, you know, please feel free to put those here in the comments section and we will definitely get to it. And thank you, Nancy Duncan Thanks, Chambers, Nancy. for your for your kind comments. Uh, you've always been so supportive of what we're doing at the jail. And we we really appreciate that very, very much. Yep. And then one announcement that we did make, um, it's not the announcement that everybody's been uh, hanging on for. Again, we we really want to make that announcement. We're just waiting on a couple more things to fall, but it will happen. Um, but uh, we did announce this week that we have formed a partnership with the Tennessee State Museum out of Nashville. This is a really, really big um, announcement for us because uh, Tennessee State Museum, uh, they, they do workshops throughout the state and they've never had a regional partner in this region uh, a, a historical site that is a regional partner. So we've become that regional partner for them. So we will be holding workshops for them. Uh, they have all of the curriculum. They will be bringing the, those workshops. Um, uh, June 15th will be the first one. It is geared toward teachers. And um, it's basically how to teach history, uh, the, especially the, uh, the Indian removal, the topic of Indian removal. So that'll be the subject on June 15th. And that will be our first workshop with them. But as I said before, they create all the curriculum. Uh, we will be uh, giving tours of the jail. So we're really, really excited about this because, um, you know, it, it, it is a very uh, good get for Scott County. It gives recognition to Scott County. It gives their teachers different resources um, that they can look forward to with in conjunction with Tennessee State Museum. So we're really, really excited about this. Yeah, and it's not just Scott County. Um, it is the surrounding regions. So if you're in Morgan County, Fentress, Campbell, Pickett, any of the surrounding regions, mm -hmm. um, you know, my, my parents were teachers and that was something that they had to do every year. They got so many hours of in-service training and they always had to travel, whether it be to Nashville, Knoxville, travel several hours away 
to get this in-service training. And mm -hmm. so this opens up a great opportunity for us as a county to be able to not only spotlight the jail, but also be able to bring people in, but also give our local teachers something local that they can do. And, and I believe they get six hours of, yeah, they get six, uh, yeah. Yeah, of in-service credit. And I think we're going to be talking about on our portion of it because it'll be partnership about alternate alternative tourism methods and mm -hmm. such. So. Yeah, absolutely. So we will be speaking at that that workshop. And to answer Janet's question, the the actual workshop is not at the jail. The, there's the First Presbyterian Church of Huntsville. It is literally 100 yards from the jail. So uh, we will be using their fellowship hall that will allow us to have more seats available because we just can't have um, a lot of people in, in the space here at the jail we just don't have that space. So we will be using the fellowship hall at the Presbyterian church for the workshops. And then we will be bringing people over here to take tours and give them guided tours of the jail. Yeah. And so um, again, to kind of answer your question with the Tennessee museum also um, they, they host these all over the state. And so we are a region that is not easily reached. And so this gives that opportunity to reach these more rural uh, communities here in this area. So, so it really is a big deal. We're very excited about it. And, um, you know, just looking forward to other opportunities to be able to work with the museum in this program. Yep. So it'll be a lot of fun. So enough talking about us. Uh, we know we've had our guests waiting for a little bit, but, you know, this is continuation of our uh, jailhouse series. Again, a series that we're very proud of speaking to different uh, jails and historical societies across the country, getting to know some different uh, things that they're doing, some of their spooky stories and such. So without further ado, let's go ahead and welcome our guest from Arizona tonight. Hello. Hey, hey how are y'all? Glad to be here. Thank you. Absolutely. So Molly and Rita and Bethany in the back, correct? Yes. yes. <laughs> Molly, Rita, Bethany. Perfect. <laughs> so, so we're really excited to have these ladies on here because they've got some really unique programs that they are working on out there in Arizona. And uh, we've got Rita and uh, Bethany, they're from uh, Arizona Ghost Adventures. Are, you're with them, correct, Bethany? Yes. Okay. And uh, Molly is the um, the facilities manager, events coordinator, and regional film coordinator for Globe Downtown Association. Okay. Yeah, that's like <laughs> welcome. It's actually yeah, we, warm and blooming and everything outside for Bethany and her allergies. <laughs> it's that time of year around here. <laughs> Uh, that's fantastic. Well, you know, Arizona is just one state. I, I've I've been to Arizona several times, but never as a paranormal investigator. And it's one of those those states that just has so many unique opportunities. Um, so we'll get into to some of those here in just a minute. But why don't you tell us a little bit about the jail and the community that you're located in, just kind of the history surrounding the location that you're at right now? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're in Globe, Arizona. We're just uh, shy of two hours. We're kind of centrally located between Tucson and Phoenix. So hour and a half, uh, two hours out of Phoenix. So uh, beautiful, easy drive through the mountains. We're uh, a historic mining town that is actually still mining. Oh, nice. um, it started the uh, silver brush and all the rest and then de definitely changed over into the copper. And so we still mine a lot of copper and and uh, associated things, but we have uh, at least five major copper mining operations in town. And um, we are still the county seat. And uh, so we have a lot of activity downtown. Um, our historic downtown, uh, you know how these things go where they're founded and then they get mad and unincorporated. And <laughs> so officially, technically it's 1876, but um, we we were here a lot earlier. The downtown was established, you know, well before that. But uh, we we can all agree on at least 1870. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, we used to, you know, part of the incarnations of the jail is we had, you know, just like every small town had the adobe, you know, the nice John Wayne Western pull the bars out of the window type of adobe jail, and, <laughs> and then they they got fancier and had the old courthouse in jail and the jail was in the bottom of that and that's more when you read the records of Geronimo and and Pearl Hart and Billy the Kid and Apache Kid they all would have come through that 
old jail. And then as as things progressed and town got busier and bus, more buslier, um, they needed more room and more of a courthouse and jail. So, so they took that down, but we still are on the same corner that it always was. And uh, they built the new jail, which opened in 1906. So 1905, 1906 officially opened. And the sheriff's office in jail was again underneath um, on the inside and they ran out of room near immediately. So, and we're talking about the days where we had the gallows. So the jail is pretty much, you know, without knowing the exact square footage of the original courthouse, we're probably built right over where the gallows site was originally. Um, but they wanted to get us into the modern day and get people to due process. So we are uniquely situated um, next to the courthouse with a beautiful catwalk, <laughs> in between, which everybody refers to as the Bridge, Bridge of Sighs. And um, oh, cool! Yeah, so, so right in between those two buildings, and we look just the same. We have a, a few ADA uh, additions, but pretty much everything's authentic, and uh, and it did work. And you know, the catwalk we refer to it now as walk the plank type of thing, but. It was we were a county facility, so it was more to get people to the judge without the town people taking the matters into their own hands. And and, um, you know, and before the gallows, we had the hanging tree and, you know, incarnations like every town in, in America, mm -hmm. did, of course. And but it really, you know, we like to say that the sheriff that was in charge of making sure that this jail was built, um, he was the first one in a long line of sheriffs that one was allowed to get married because they didn't last very long in the territory, you know, but he was the first one to live long enough to see his grandchildren alive. So oh. the, theory, the theory worked that um, this concrete structure kept the inmates safe, but it also, um, it also worked to get them to do process and moved on. So, and um, mm -hmm. quickie for the county is, you know, most jails are, they're sentenced and then they're in jail. Mm -hmm. um ours are you know in county processing is sometimes they were here six months more um waiting to even see a judge so right. um it was hard so you had innocent people with hardened criminals and repeat offenders um teaching the juveniles things they shouldn't have been teaching them um we had <laughs> women we had you know you think about the day and age that we were here so this jail was established in 1910 mm -hmm. and we had prisoners until 1981 which, oh wow! Wow, it's pretty, yeah. pretty bad. And then it was a marshal's office for a little while, and then um, and then they just were gonna make it a museum, but never did until the the guy in green over my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like I'm black, and then but he's back there. Um, and finally, with the Main Street program, we're able to put it together and uh, be open. Um, for you know, tourists and the like. And, and it's been a great partnership with the paranormal investigators because we're historians on our end, but there's been several things that the paranormal investigators have said, hey, we have readings of this or we have readings of that. And we've been able to, to go back and cross-reference. And some of our most infamous cases are because our paranormal partners found it first and then we were able to research from there. So they went over a lot of our historians that just were not going to talk about it. <laughs> not talk about the activity and la la la, let's keep trying to clean it <laughs> instead of us really working with them. And it's been a wealth of information. And, and so I'm blessed to have all of our paranormal partners. Yeah. We're, and we, have, we have quite a few paranormal teams in Arizona because there's yeah. just so much history out oh, there. Oh, absolutely. So yeah. Different teams uncovering different information mm -hmm. uh, in the course of our investigation, which is really nice. Yeah. Sorry, Miranda's cats are oh, yeah. crazy right now. So, yeah. Thanks for, I am sorry. <laughs> they are. Oh, I was like, a cat. it's a coyote in our world. <laughs> yeah, so Pixel is not happy right now. So, sorry about that. Um, so, you said the jail closed in the 1980s, right? Uh, as a jail. So, did the building just sit vacant for a while or was there any kind of use yeah they had some the marshal's office used it for a short window of time and then mm -hmm. there was some storage here um but pretty much we know all of the storage at one point was moved over to the courthouse next door where the original jail was and wonderfully a sewer main broke and uh you know oh happy <laughs> hey at least she's facing that way <laughs> um, um, 
like most of the records were lost to us. So, and and we didn't realize till we were really researching that a lot of our silver belt, which is the oldest continual continuously operating sorry, newspaper in the state of Arizona is based right here out of Globe, Arizona. They were never digitized and they oh, have the wow. most of the information in the cases. So we have um, Boeing Plaza, their research team, and a lot of funders have even the mines, yay mines, <laughs> have donated <laughs> to help digitize all of that. And it, it there's so much information, but because we were such a copper mecca for the entire United States, um, a lot of our stories were read in the Chicago Tribune and New York Times and all over the country. So mm -hmm. it's interesting how many people were interested in the Old West and all the things that were happening based out of here. Well, and I think Grove was, Globe was growing so fast also because that picture that you show of the courthouse, mm -hmm. that's actually the second courthouse. Mm -hmm. There was the original building was built in 1888 and they, so that's the jail and there, the yeah. courthouse. The That's original, the 1906 yeah, one, 1906, yeah. the original one was built in 1888 and the city was growing so fast that they built that one. And then it was still growing so fast that they realized that the, the jail area within that building, it just wasn't. It wasn't enough. It only and had that's 16 why. bucks. So <laughs> they made more than 16 yeah. bucks. Yeah. So that's why the, the building next door, the one that we're in right now, the 1910 jail was built. Well, and we have one more tidbit to, you know, at, at the time we were being built. So again, the plans were already moving and they were starting to build. We opened in 10, but of course they were building it. Um, Yuma Territorial Prison was not slated for closure yet. So some of the, uh, there were some salvage cells and we've still been trying to piece together where they came from. Our, the newspaper articles all say they were from Yuma Territorial Prison, but we know they were going to Yuma Territorial Prison and were diverted because they announced their closure in 1909. Uh -huh. So all of our amenities were scrapped in this building. So we don't have a kitchen. They ended up not putting fully in the sheriff's bunkhouse. Um, all of the creature comforts that you think that you could have for your employees <laughs> and the like were all scrapped. And most of our cells, the poly system cells, uh, predate. So um, all the patent dates are definitely late 1800s. Um, so we, yes, it's a was a modern for the day, all concrete construction, but the inner cells are like cages, you know, yeah. where you could even crawl on top. It's perfect for our our invisible guests or our invisible inmates. They like to <laughs> everywhere, but um, but it's definitely got that creep factor, but it's great for our filming and things as well, because there's flat bars, there's round bars, there's a little bit of everything. So they can do different scenes for different eras. And, and we film movies here that are modern day, but we film a lot of old Westerns and stuff. Can't tell the difference because oh, it's, cool. it's so. Did, did, did the jail house both men and women? Or was it strictly it just, okay. Yes. So we're broken up into the downstairs had some offices and intake and visiting and, and lawyers, you know, room you know where you could come um see people but there's on the ground floor there's a big men's tank and of course they're all locked inside and then you can walk around it or they would have walked around it for the security guard type situation then upstairs that is mimicked um those pictures are of our downstairs and okay. an act that has all the carvings are there but we cleaned up the f-bombs and the things that the little <laughs> children don't need to repeat to their parents downstairs downstairs but upstairs we didn't touch anything so all the graffiti oh. is authentic um oh. and we're finding new stuff every day you know there's just somebody points something out that you just in all these years how did i not see that it, that happened and we have a lot of prisoners that come back and visit <laughs> a lot a lot to come back and visit some just want to stand out front and like regroup but some kind of want to see their old bunk or want us to go in and take a picture of their bunk kind of thing so mm -hmm. that's the bridge of size mm -hmm. and okay yeah, yeah and that would be the bridge that connects it's just an alley between the courthouse and the jail uh -huh. and they would go up a staircase and go directly out to the you know to the courthouse so it's not even like they got to really go outside and mm -hmm. experience the outside. And that bridge has, and I'm sure we'll talk about it um, a little bit later on, quite the history. Yeah, it does. Quite mm -hmm. the history. 
And we had the courtyard in the back, but the courtyard wasn't for exercise or anything like that. It was for the trustees um, to work on cars or work, you know, those kind of things. Um, In fact, we still have an old headstone that was one of the only things left here when we moved in that we've been trying to reunite with the grave. I think oh, we're close. Wow. There she goes. Um, we always thought it was a hymn, but we, we finally, I think we got it. But oh, wow. they would have been charged with cleaning the grave, the cemeteries and things. So. And, and I may have missed you saying this because I, I pulled my screen up so I could close my door and get the cats out of here. <laughs> but um, did you say if the, uh, did the jailer live on site for any period of time? Yes, there was a quarters, in fact, just to our right over here, or I guess, yeah, or backwards, but um, it was, we have the blueprints, the original blueprints. And so it was a handsome perk for the day because they normally didn't live on site. Um, It was really to protect him and keep him alive longer. And they ended up not using it as long as they had intended originally to use it um, and turned it into more of an office type situation um, just because they had to scrap and and do things. And and I should note that all the food, there was always um, contracts from people, the restaurants in town. So one mm-hmm. of the longest running contracts was the old Chinaman that was all the way at the other end, more the red light district of town that um, everybody knew. He always delivered the food in his little green wagon or little red wagon. Wow. And it was soup and bologna or whatever basics. Um, and then stories of kids have popped up more recently that he used to pay per squirrel you could catch. So <laughs> he fed them a squirrel. I don't know. <laughs> Sounds like great. <laughs> while, while we're on the food discussion, I'm, I'm going to share a quick little story here. Uh, so we were conducting a paranormal investigation and we were out in the back, in the back courtyard area. And I wasn't really familiar with what that area was used for. Um, the weather being what it is out here, sometimes it's really, really hot and sometimes it's really, really cold. The desert gets really cold or monsoon season. So we don't get to go back there all the time. And we were conducting what's called an ST session. I don't know if you're familiar with that. Okay, so Mm -hmm. the the person is wearing noise canceling headphones, uh, blindfold, and they're hooked up to a uh, spirit box, Mm -hmm. an SP7. And this gentleman was sitting there and he, he he was a guest at one of our investigations. And he's like looking around with this, with these, you know, with a mask on, a face mask on. And I'm trying to walk away from him because it seemed like he was following me and I was being really quiet. And he, then he started talking and it, and then, but then it seemed like he, he went into it and he started talking about the cars and the blood and oh, wow. the, the bombs and the accidents. And I'm thinking, is he talking about a, a war? Was he maybe a soldier that was incarcerated after the fact? And he's talking about all these things. I'm thinking, this is this is really interesting, yet bizarre. And at the end, he says, and a slice of corn. <laughs> Over here. And we're, there were about 10 of us there. And we all look at each other and we like chuckle a little bit. And we 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 you know ended the session with him and we told him everything that he said and and he had said, and a slice of corn. So the next day, thank goodness, I happened to be running late, leaving the jail because we had a previous inmate stop by with friends, a very nice gentleman who wanted to show these people where he spent six months of his life and how it changed it. Mm -hmm. Um, So we were getting out late and Molly happened to come on by. And so I was kind of debriefing her about what happened in the courtyard. and, And we're like, and he said the weirdest thing and a slice of corn. And she goes, yeah, that's a globe thing. Yeah, it's totally a globe thing. Um, we're a very Hispanic area. Well, we're a melting pot, of course, mm-hmm. but we're very, very Hispanic area. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that you see at every buffet, every family recipe, they take their corn. I've never, we never grew up with this. I'm, you know, and they, they slice it super thin and it, cause it, it stretches it. And huh. so they boil it and then they roll it in all these different yeah. spices and everything. So it's always, you always serve sliced corn, which is wow. fun. Like, yeah, you know, right? I've never heard of that. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. So and she's like, I, that's the weirdest thing. Yeah. Before. <laughs> like, oh, that makes total sense. Yeah. So I had to call him that <laughs> afternoon and 
tell him, you would not believe what we just found out. <laughs> what you wow. said, actually, because you would think in a, and the way he said it, in a slice of corn. <laughs> and, um, and it's a real thing. Yeah. I That's had no clue. So yeah. I love when we, when we have things come a, across, no matter how unusual they sound, yet there's actual history. It's actually tied to Absolutely. Something. That's, yeah. that's, so I've got two questions and then we'll move on to the, the paranormal unless anybody else has any questions, but what, who currently owns the jail? What's the ownership of the jail now? Um, we, we did a deal because we are still the county seat. So it was still Gila County. Um, but Payson, if you've ever heard of Payson, it's very, a lot of California people come and it's beautiful in the woods and everything. And so there, there is a slight fear of losing our county seat to that. And several of the properties, including this one and the courthouse, we were locally a little worried about. So we worked it out. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> so we worked it out with the city of Globe and a lot of paperwork on the rest that we were able to do a contract with the city of Globe acquired the buildings to make sure they stayed. They would never go up for public auction or anything like that. Mm -hmm. But they put in a clause that if the city of Globe ever tried to take them over for alternate use, they would immediately go back to the county. Oh, okay. Which, oh, no. So we have fail safe and it's already been tested once. So who knew that was, you know, that was needed, but, but now we know it can be, you know, in our care. And then I manage the Globe Downtown Association, which is a 501c6 nonprofit. And we manage both this building where, where we are partners with next door, but they're a C3 art center now. So it's a perfect combination. And then we also manage the 1916 train depot complex, which was oh, integral in our area. And that's only a block away. So, um, yeah, we, we love having the jail in our care. It's, it's, uh, and we leave it I mean, we get so many compliments because we do have a museum factor, but we, we don't take that to the back cells. We try to keep everything as authentic mm -hmm. as possible. Um, we just have a few, you know, jump scares, <laughs> you know, man, I can't <laughs> but we try, it's, um, you know, the whole front, we have the pictures and everything, but in the back, we definitely just try to keep it. We try not to even super clean it too much, you know, just enough. And the light comes in and it, it's, there's something about not making it too much. Yeah. Well, yeah. not too much of a clean museum that yeah, people actually feel like when they sit on a bunk, they yep. feel like what it was like to be in that cell at the time. So mm -hmm. um, it's not a traditional museum where every little bunk has decorated and signs and everything. You know, we do a lot of that verbally. Um, and then, you know, we do offer self-guided tours now because some people just want to be with their, you know, their, their tech gadget or somebody else wants to do a photo shoot or just write. We had a guy with a typewriter this weekend just come and type old letters and things in the cell. Oh, that's cool. Be part of the building and. So it, it, it facilitates for a lot of different things, a lot of layers going on at the same time, but okay. it's definitely, it's, yeah. And, well, <laughs> and it does, and it makes you appreciate one of the things because our, with our investigations, we really like to cover the historical aspect. Absolutely. People right. to learn about it. That puts the evidence that you get in context. Yes, and absolutely. We're always telling people that this will make you appreciate your nice soft bed. Because the amenities here, yeah. like Molly said, the amenities are not a lot. They're they're mm -hmm. tight. It's not they're comfortable. They were shorter back then, so uh -huh. even the bunks. There's any normal size man now would have to bend and curl to fit on one of those bunks, and there were wow. four per. And uh, sometimes wow. more. Yeah. Oh I, yeah. 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 And, in doing my research, sometimes they would have, you know, if they had a a, a cell with four bunks in it. Mm -hmm they would have some of the inmates on the floor in between or out in that hall yeah, area. The hall, they would drop more mattresses. We yeah. were at full capacity many times. Yeah. And of course, we had a whole motorcycle group locked in the 70s. Um, hey, if you're going to get locked up, you might as well be with your friends. With but, your um, friends, right? They, we had mattresses everywhere. And, and uh, in the bathrooms, you know, they never, each individual cell in the tank. Um, so there's six, so there's eight cells. Um, okay. And then they, um, the one cell in the back is a bathroom cell. Yeah. Originally, they the poly systems were designed to have bathrooms in every cell. They were never installed here. Oh. So, and then sometime in the 30s or 40s, they and that's the nice one in the women's 
section. <laughs> that yeah. is not the beautiful it men's has a one. Wall yeah, in front that of it. had a little mm-hmm. privacy divider, but it was still open on the other side for peekaboos, I guess. Yeah. But, um, <laughs> but well, uh, we won't go. We won't go into that. But um, but yeah, definitely. You know, they never installed. So there was one bathroom in the back, and um, we we know that at some point all the levers and the poly system started sticking. So they welded all the internal cage doors open. So you could easily have your 16 plus people all wow. in there together and one bathroom. Yeah. So it was pretty. The, yeah. That's a little violent. The creature comforts. I mean, you don't have air conditioning. You you mm-hmm. don't have, was there heating here? They finally put in some radiators that um, the heat the, the hot water and you know oil whatever was pumped from across the, the catwalk so it had to go through you know if it's snowing outside it still has to go through the process of going outside and coming in but they finally added some radiators but but with this but it's cold yeah it's cold if this area <laughs> gets cold, cold yeah. the mm-hmm. desert gets incredibly cold in the winter time and globe gets snow and you know when you talk just radiator heat metal metal bunks yeah. metal cells surrounding you concrete floor single pane windows around the whole building mm-hmm. and it gets cold and it warm. also gets equally hot. Stifling. hot oh yeah stifling hot so a lot of the um we have a couple of lawyers that were young lawyers when we were still open that come and do tours for us people beg for their tours but it's more about the smells and the you know the all the things you know they didn't have a lot of budget so they and they didn't have an infirmary so you know you kind of had to tough it out and there's a lot of stories of the young um the young juveniles having to shadow sick people so they would put them in a cell together to watch or suicide watch oh wow. they didn't have staff do that they had trustees or you know the like do that so but the the heat was pretty intense and every one of those doors like so that's the door up to the women's tank which would have had there was a meditation cell and then a single cell where the assassination happens. Um, and then, so that door would have been closed. There was two more doors and then internal doors. And you think about all the doors leading up to that point there. I mean, I've never really counted them. I think there's like 17 different locking wow. mechanisms from the front door all the way up to the women's tank. So, wow. wow. Yeah, it's crazy. I think some That's- of it was to keep the women safe while they were in here yeah. as well. Yeah, there's extra measures you can tell and extra pieces that were added to that. Yeah, so there's a bunch so, of guys. Yeah. And so what was the, I'm sorry, what was the capacity? What was it built for? What was the capacity built to hold? Oh, fit, it, it might be just shy of 65. Okay. And that fluctuated because the top floor was open mm-hmm. and they could put costs. Okay. So okay. when they were super over capacity, you know, and, and then you think about the day. So as it got closer into the 70s or 80s, there was a little bit faster turnaround. Turnaround. But part of, you know, the wonderful old West is there wasn't any fast due process. Mm-hmm. So sometimes you could wait forever for the traffic oh, yeah. judge to come through. And that's where Globe was so forward. We actually finally had a judge that lived on site. You know, all of these things were part of the process to get us into the more modern age. But we definitely, you know, even the assassination was a, a perfect story of, you know, people used to just grab people and, you know, I, the, I'm going to grab the judge out of the bar and we're going to decide tonight we're going to hang this guy. You know, it, it was pretty vigilante Vigilantism justice. was very common here. It, mm-hmm. In the Old West, think about it. <laughs> and we're that town that the train stops at. So there's no oh. connection to the East Coast. We were that we got them all. If they got on the train to go West, this is where they got out, <laughs> you mm-hmm. know, unless they drew, went by stage or something from here. So we had a little bit of everything. We have Clantons and we have um, the Earp family settled here. Oh, wow. And then the Big Nose Kate there. Big Nose Kate had her boarding house, and not twice. a block of the street. <laughs> and she yeah. was, yeah, she was affiliated with yeah. Matt Holiday and the Earp brothers. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Uh, while Bill Hickok, he came through. And I mean, because we're, if you look at the stagecoach route, it's uh, Globe, you have Oracle, mining, all these mining towns, yeah. and then you have Tucson, uh, not, you know, not too terribly far. Yeah. And we're, we're really the hub of this, the wheel. And then all the towns are about two hours away. Okay. And, we're the hub, and that's where the train ended up there. 
Yeah. And, um, and it's the same. Our first train was actually one of the trains that met at the transcontinental. So there's so much oh, okay. extra history so much here. History. Um, that, and people just got off the train to stretch their legs and people grabbed them. And, you know, <laughs> they're like, oh, I, I never got back on the train again. So <laughs> have an, or it used to have an underground system for that that out. is one of the folklores but we, we do because they had put in what they felt like was a modern drainage system but we also know um and thanks to the mediums and different things you know they they don't know anything and they nail it right in the right spot but we had um an old route from the old chinatown so the we had the red light district of course most old okay. towns have that um but we had a uh, corner and uh, all the coffins and things would come into one section that was near the train, but then they would always find crushed uh, coffins like during prohibition and all of that. But, and all the Chinamen and everything would, would travel in the alleys or mm -hmm. under, under the streets through these uh, passageways. And also, mm -hmm. you know, this end of town wasn't supposed to have prostitutes, but <laughs> by the time, I think they imported a couple yeah. for a special <laughs> Yeah, yeah. There you go. Special, special, and and that is a good segue to say we had several presidents visit us here. No. That's for another. Yeah, that's for another podcast. That's for, that's for another podcast. <laughs> the, thing, so, the services we provide. <laughs> so when um you know when y'all started taking this taking the jail over and and really using it for tourism and such. What was the reaction from the community when you started doing paranormal? Um, we did it quietly. We did it quietly for a long time. Mm -hmm. And really, we kind of kept it. So, okay. So the marriage of our segue <laughs> is we are now, we'll be in our 25th year of our Ghosts of Globe tour. Okay. And so, so we have been talking about ghosts for 25 years, but mm -hmm. um the transition was just starting maybe after year well, eight, nine or so. We started it inviting some of our paranormal partners just to be on site in case people had questions. And Very then it cool. was just, so they could realize, wow, these are real people with tech, you know, mm -hmm. and it's not like they're what people have decided at church that they ha all have horns or whatever, you know, this is a silly <laughs> thing. But, and then really. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but really it was a segue and, you know, our, we have so many churches here and our next oh, yeah. is also a church. In fact, I was thinking of your slice of corn. And usually when we talk Sunday mornings after a big investigation, you see the processional of all of the deacons and everybody going into the church in the background. So you kind of, it, it's a beautiful community that all works well <laughs> together. Um, but I think at some point, we had some backlash of really just talking about the occurrences that mm -hmm. happened, like mm -hmm. the lights flicker, or this is what they hear and that. And, no, I can't possibly, you know, and the people from out of town know they've been to other towns. This isn't, you know, so we started feathering in more of, okay, let's research what happened at that location. Very cool. To cause the staircase to have so much angst. And, mm -hmm. and it's really one over our historians, you know, now we also do a cemetery tour, which is not Very paranormal cool. based, but it's all connected. Absolutely. Um, yeah. And, and the churches actually help us with stories with yeah. that because yeah. it's honoring the people that are gone. And mm -hmm. let's face it, our ghost Globe tour is fun because we all don't die graciously. <laughs> There's, it's it's very sad, and you do we do it in theatrical style with the hundred seat playhouse. Oh, nice, very next cool. Door nice. At the courthouse, so um, try to keep it as authentic yeah. as possible, and and um and the and the theater being we just mix up the stories, so you're not just so depressed when you're done because it's horrible, but. You know, some things are jealous lovers or prostitutes lighting each other on fire. You know, we haven't really ever lit anyone on fire. During that <laughs> Talk about a production. I'd like to see that show. <laughs> but like, they do tours right in Arizona. Exactly. I know. <laughs> but even in the jail, you know, we are super active. Even during the day, we try to tell families, you know, we, we yeah. have a protocol where we have little sheriff's badges that we give the kids and it's 
it's really so we can also read if they're being bothered. Mm -hmm. So like staff, you know, which are things that you don't put in a training manual, right? You right, know? right. But, you know, we we teach the kids, they are sheriff for the day while they're here and they have control and nothing can touch them. And, and we watch them if they're, and we're like, you know, hold your badge, if, if you know, remind. And, and so we visually can see if they're being bothered because they're mm -hmm. usually, and then, you know, my staff will, will be right there with them and, or watch them out front, whether, because some parents just drag their kids and they, yeah. they just, yeah. And we right. all have that. Right. So, yeah. um, but we try to, we try to maintain some of that, but, but there's, the paranormal investigators get so many different it's we do have a few very confident chatty Cathy's that talk into our groups mm -hmm. but there's always things where people go well what was this and I think mm -hmm. wow like they, yeah. we don't even talk about that story really on the regular <laughs> so it's amazing to me and I don't go on the tours really because I, I I get to go through the data and everything after they send me things all the time but Right. But I'm impressed with their work and I vet everybody before they come inside my baby here. And there you go. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> definitely takes good care of us. So very Aww. happy about that. Now I trust her. I trust her implicitly. So well, Rita, and, go ahead, Rita. Oh, I was just gonna say let's 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 talk a little bit, uh, Rita and Bethany, about Arizona Ghost Adventures. I know you guys have quite the resume of locations you've investigated and you know and people you've investigated with with ghost adventures and uh destination fear i mean in just some of the locations out there in arizona why don't you tell us about your group how you got started with what you're doing and then also with what you're doing there at uh, the gila county courthouse wonderful yeah well i actually um acquired az ghost adventures about two years ago we're coming up on our two-year anniversary and before that i investigated as one of the investigators with the company. And uh, I always tell people who buys a company during COVID, right? We <laughs> opened a museum during COVID. So. And I did because I had a lot of faith in it. I've experienced paranormal. Uh, this is what I tell everyone on my investigations. I've experienced paranormal as far back as I can remember. Even as a child, things were happening. Um, and when you're young, you ju it's, just, it's just part of your world, right? Mm -hmm. And then as you get older, you don't want people thinking that you're crazy. Uh, when you're seeing people or hearing things or having occurrences in your home. And I was, I remember how thankful I was when uh, ghost hunters came mm -hmm. up yeah. and it's like, yes, because I did not want to tell people what was going on because I thought they would think I was crazy. And, um, and I have two children and my son also experiences quite a bit of paranormal when he goes on our investigations, he's like a, a magnet for things to happen. He's a he's a really big guy, and mm -hmm. a lot of the uh, male spirits are intimidated by him. Um, so uh, it 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 creates more things happening for sure, for sure. Um, and to to touch on what Molly was talking about, I really think it's so important. You can be a paranormal investigator and have the utmost professionalism with what you do. It's so important when people come on my investigations that they learn something. And I tell people, it's not my job to make you to make you believe. Absolutely. But, Absolutely. You know, and if you come here and you just learn something about the location, I'm, I'm happy with that. Um, mm -hmm. Your experiences are your experiences. I tell people everyone experiences the paranormal differently. So it, it is no way, shape or form for me to judge how someone experiences the paranormal. Um, and I also tell people who come on our investigations, every investigation is different mm -hmm. and every investigation is a puzzle and every person that comes on that investigation is a piece of that puzzle. Mm -hmm. So as we put that puzzle together for that specific investigation, because you don't know what people may be bringing with them, okay. you know, what attachments they may be bringing with them. So every, for every investigation, we have different things happen, which is wonderful. A lot of times we have the same spirits come through, especially here, like Kingsley mm -hmm. and Jordan, whoever Jordan is, we're still investigating that one. Um, but, but everyone has, I have not mm -hmm. had an investigation where someone hasn't brought something with them. And, right. um, and that's always interesting because I think whatever it may be with them, be it family member, um, friend, 
they're in an environment where there are people who are willing to hear what what this I'm going to use the word spirit has to say. Right. And so it makes it easier for it to come through. It's just a right. more accepting um, community, so to speak. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So that's that's our our philosophy uh, with conducting paranormal investigations. I really want to learn about the location. I want to have our uh, guests that come. We call them our guest investigators because once they're on an investigation with us, they're just like us. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And I experience paranormal all the time. Bethany experiences paranormal all the time. Are you awake, Bethany? Yes. <laughs> yeah, let's, bring, let's bring Bethany into the conversation <laughs> just a little bit. Let, let's bring her in just a little bit. Let's, let's, she Bethany, doesn't fall asleep anywhere. So. <laughs> Bethany, <laughs> yeah. They just, full disclosure, they had an investigation last night oh, at, at yeah. another oh, location. Yeah. And they... So Bethany, how did, how did you get started with this, Bethany? I also started as an investigator, uh, a guest investigator. And then when she bought the company, I was just been good friends with her. So she just, I guess I just helped her out and she brought me on as the team. Yeah. And what's really neat is where like the yin and the yang is with that <laughs> is I, everyone has their own different uh, knack. Mm -hmm. And so for me, like I love dowsing rods. That is my, my favorite piece of equipment. I call them my talking sticks. It took a long time to, to trust me myself using them and to trust the rods. Mm -hmm. I always tell people, let the rods do the work, but that's, that's my thing. And I also, uh, I'm not a medium by any means, but I, I there's there's things that I, I just know when we're doing investigations. Things come to me. Well, you're and, so good to put people in places yeah. that are all good at different yeah. things. Yeah. I so tell it's people it's balanced yeah. investigation. And it's like a story going on in my head when we're doing it. But Bethany <laughs> is the queen of catching shadow figures, taking pictures of shadow figures. Nice. And we have other people that attend a lot of our um, investigations and we do, we do partner with some other groups. Uh, so it's like a, it's like a, a family. And in fact, they were all at my house this morning for breakfast, but um, <laughs> she's a great hostess, but they all have their, like, there's one person who Estes, I, well, there's actually two. And once they put those headphones on, you would swear they're channeling. Mm -hmm. uh, so, in fact, one of them was on the Bullion Plaza uh, Ghost Adventures episode because her ST session was so profound. And it was the first time that they had ever done it and their first investigation with us. And oh, that's wow. the type of video that we caught. That's what happened. So mm -hmm. you, you never know what you're going to get, but you know you're going to get something. Uh, so that that's that's pretty much like I like to say, we have a philosophy on how we how we run our investigations. But uh, insofar as paranormal experiencing it, I've experienced paranormal in every house that I've lived in, even oh, wow. uh, we, you know, even out here in Globe. And uh, it's it's pretty interesting when you when you buy a little house and Molly pulls <laughs> up to see it. <laughs> and I can't believe you, part, where's the bleep button? I won't yeah. say that, but I can't believe you bought that house. No, <laughs> that is like, in fact, like when when Ghost Adventures would call looking for additional locations or do you have anything and they, you know, always want something, you know, we have a lot of happy ghosts. Well, it's a happy place, but we do have, you know, there's there's uh, a little bit more angry here and there, but there was always one house that we we're like, I'm not giving them the house in the neighborhood. I am not. But so many people always would just move out in the middle of the night, all these stories of this house. And, and I mean, Globe was also where the book of satan guy lived that wrote the book of satan like there we have some but, yeah but i'm like not given, not given that super dark stuff there you oh, go keep it to the buildings where we can yeah and um i pull up and i'm like are you freaking kidding me say freaking. Oh, she did not say freaking <laughs> out of all the houses in globe she buys that wow she oh, said it it's be meant to be no i'm like How no it can't be that house this? it cannot be that house so and, the, and, and you it has I love it. yeah I love it. but it hasn't done anything crazy for her well, so no, we can, we it's can. a perfect marriage yeah we have, <laughs> and I house 20 minutes and i told my husband this is it this will do 
And it was oh, heavy. So <laughs> and I said, no, nope, this will do. This is good. The universe found its perfect tennis yes, for that. And it there was you go. We have the spirits that come, you know, that come forth. Bethany's experienced them also. And mm -hmm. um, unfortunately, we work with some wonderful mediums here and also uh, in the UK. And so when you can have multiple uh, mediums, uh, yeah. telling you the, and I don't give, I don't give them any of the information. So when you have multiple mediums giving you the same information, it's, it, and it, this, I mean, this is like very precise about a person. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting. And I think that uh, one of the also interesting things is one of the names that's associated with my house started coming through almost a year ago on one of my investigations okay. and was profoundly coming through here at this location and uh so i was like wow that's this is is this like fate serendipity whatever you want to call it but um but i'm happy with i like that. to think my inmates don't get to go anywhere um we did have one investigation across the street where they had a new station with them because they had had full apparitions and things and the cleaning ladies all would quit and and um and so they they went over there and they were doing, one of the teams had come back regularly, which was doing digital um, tracking so they mm -hmm. could kind of see which signature matched what. Mm -hmm. And um, they got the same one across the street uh, and then they had come here a second. And they, when they went back through all their stuff, they had um, the words field trip. <laughs> wow. <laughs> over to the jail but um, oh, we wow. haven't had they, they said all the years of tracking they haven't had anything actually leave the jail which is yeah. which is oh, curious we've had, we've had, we've had yeah wow. we've been at the train depot it's a block <laughs> away and people would be here doing the evening investigation and then they'll come on one of our investigations because uh y'all sent them to mm -hmm. us saying oh there's a there's a paranormal investigation going on a block away and they came over i remember that one clearly remember Oh, nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Three girl women flip around. There's little no one that? at the door. Okay. <laughs> well, the doors are locked. Did you hear me? It's not a cat. I promise. <laughs> but um, yeah, that, that's coming here. <laughs> um, yeah, we were talking about archives, but yeah, yeah, it's enough. So. Okay. Okay, sorry. There is somebody at the door. Can you go check it, please? Okay. But, so, yeah, but we were at the train depot. And, oh, it's Tom. <laughs> Deep on. Deep on. Deep on. Deep on. Deep at the door. But we had, we had people come over a block away, and things that are normally here were coming. Uh, they followed them there. And at wow. the end of our investigation, we had, we had to say, okay, you need to go back to the jail now. Because... Wow. Can't stay well, here. That, well that's where home. we live. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. But can't like Kingsley Oles, we've had several people, oh. you know, it's a regular thing. And then every once in a while they get something else in the cell that's like pretending, like jealous of all the inner like everybody asking Kingsley all the questions that something else will come in yeah. and mm -hmm. like a poser type of thing. So it's interesting to track some of the digital sequences to try yeah. to figure out the ones that are normally there and normally yeah. talking. Um, but that case, you know, half my staff feels he's guilty and the other half know he's innocent and, and it's an unsolved mystery. So mm -hmm. it's, oh, cool. it's interesting for every group that comes gets something a little yeah. different. And it's, and it's funny, Kingsley Olds, he was one of the most notorious inmates here. Uh, and he was actually, they say, uh, well, he is, he's, he was jailed for, um, the death of two young sisters um, that they were in his charge and he was put up in the woman's section where there's a solitary cell uh, mm -hmm. because they said for his protection because they didn't want the vigilantes coming and getting him and they stormed the hospital he had shot off half of his face and they were storming so the same this is right after this was opened and yeah, built in July. so yeah the same um sheriff that was like no this is going to get people to do justice it's exactly he was here to protect so they got him out of the hospital um, because they were going to take care of him. Like, and, and it's really because the coroner's inquest findings mm -hmm. came out that there were probable cause to okay. indict him essentially for the murder of the two girls. Okay. And so it all happened like instantly. And he was assassinated within three days um, from a crime. You know, this is a fortress you could not 
get into, into it. it. But someone, you know, accidentally left the door open the courthouse and the judge's mm. quarters and the keys and the the gun vault, you know, everything. Somebody let, and they all assume it's the dad, but we've had a lot of local people come forward saying, no, no, we have more history, you know. Um, wow. But of course, there's no time limit for murder. So right. it would have all been 100 years old now, but or more. But yeah. But essentially, they hid him out in the women's section with guards and a nurse. He was a sitting duck. He was wow. A, he was a he sitting was. duck. Yeah. And uh, we've been, for years, we've been going through investigating on this because I'll go to Molly and say, we've had this come through. And so I, there, it, I truly believe there's a lot, a lot more to that story. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just from what I, what I've read and I, my day job is in healthcare. So, you know, I go mm. through like with his wounds that he had and things like that. And I'm, I'm like, some things are just not adding up. Right. And I have found that, as we come into, when we go into his cell to investigate and we have him join us okay. throughout this building. But when we go in, in fact, I have some wonderful video I'll have to show you from just last week that he was, you know, setting off our equipment on command. But I found as I've come to it from a, a place of, I want to hear your story, what happened. Mm -hmm. And you must be so remorseful for what happened to those girls. Uh, the amount of evidence that we're getting is just exploding. Mm -hmm. It's exploding. Yeah. And, and in that particular story, we only knew about it. This is back before we knew that um, the Silver Bell, the newspaper articles weren't digitized. So we had paranormal teams in. Again, we we're kind of keeping it on the down low. And they kept getting, Debbie Branning and her group, they kept getting readings of little girls up in that cell. And they kept saying, why would there be little kids up here? Like, what, what is going on? And then they started power researching with uh, Tom Foster and that whole team and they started digging up all these articles. So we personally did not know anything about wow. this case. And it was, there were articles from all over the country. It was such a big deal of a case. Mm -hmm. um, and the little girls had drowned and there was no foul play, but it was, there was just enough, but he had tried to, he was so, felt so bad. He tried to commit sure, suicide. Hmm. But it kind of didn't work. So they caught him in half of his mouth. So he was writing on slates and things. But what was interesting to us is it was the first occurrence. So now we've even researched over and over again, the first mention of ghosts on the headlines of the newspaper. Because oh, wow. He, uh, he was seeing visions of the girls. The girls were beckoning him to hurry up and come. That's cool. And it was, and he was writing on the slate to the nurse over and over again. And he was on morphine, yes, but over and over again wow. about the ghosts of the girls. And that was significant because people didn't yeah. think of that. You know, they'd seen cool. insane or something else, but it was headlines ghost wow. with even well, back then. So. And that's cool. Interestingly enough, when we were here last week, um, a, a psychic that we know, I'm going to give him a plug, a shameless plug, Psychic Soldier. He's out of the UK, Jonathan. He's wonderful. And I never give him any background information. And he didn't know where I was. And he sent me a message that was coming through. And he said, King, the name King, Kingston, Kingy, something like that. And I'm like, oh, wow. okay. He goes, but there's also, I keep seeing the singer named Lulu. Oh, uh, Lulu's one of the baby girls. One of the girls, right? And then uh, he said, you know, she, she doesn't Lulu, know this yeah. yet. And then he said, and I'm seeing a lot about salt. Wow. So, were they, it was the Salt River that they. The river. Wow. Yeah. And this That's is wild. the one, and he wow. was texting me this at <laughs> four in the morning because it's daytime for him in the UK, and he had no yeah. clue. Wow. So well, we found later that it could have just been because one of the girls, they, couldn't find right away, but she was down in a whirlpool. Yeah. So they may have just mm. gone swimming. It was a super hot day. It would have been normal to get off the buckboard and go, you mm -hmm. know, go dip in the water and then get back on and something happened. And, yeah. and so, yeah, you, you know, it's, it's, there's so many stories that, yeah. we, you know, and the jail, like every jail, I mean, you guys probably have had suicides and mm -hmm. murders and all of the rest. And, and um, in, we get so many people to come through and they just, they, you know, they'll, they'll either just start crying and say, mm -hmm. it just wants to explain what happened, that it's not mm -hmm. guilty, he's not guilty, or they'll just start talking about yeah. something or something will move through them and they just need to sit down or want to go throw up or something, you know, they'll try to 
you know, just watch and, and take care of people the best mm-hmm. we can. But there's history here and, and in so many different places. And there's mm-hmm. so much camaraderie through other jails because it, it wasn't an easy place. Right, can't exactly. And being locked in these cells. Mm-hmm. Can't. Yeah. Yeah. No. And, and and all the ones that we found, all the ones that we've spoken to, it, it is the, the jails really want to tell their stories. You know, yeah. the, the walls talk. Absolutely. Yeah. And um, so it definitely seems like y'all have quite the activity there. Oh, every day. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so so people want to investigate or they just want to come for a day tour. Go ahead and, and tell how uh, to tell people how they can find you. Yeah, absolutely. So we do regular hours, which seem limited, but it's because we have such a big filming and paranormal schedule. So we're always open Thursday, Friday, Saturday from 11 to 2 for self-guided tours. And then we try to add on Wednesdays and Sundays when we can, but, and we're always open for pre-book tours. So if they want to just reach out to us, we could do a full guided tour, a facility tour with one of our guides. And then we're open as many evenings as we can get for ourselves because we share the building with countless paranormal groups. And a lot of them are private groups that book. We have sometimes six or seven a week. Um, some wow. share nights. It just depends. Um, and then, of course, photo shoots and filming and all of that as well. Um, so we try to do first Fridays always as an evening investigation. <laughs> yeah, I love you. I love Sally. We're Sally and, fans. And that one was really slow. Yeah, yeah <laughs> she's making she's making her presence known. <laughs> and I I should say, you know, we keep it self guided tours only five dollars. It's, really it's we used to do a donation only, but you know, they take two hours and it's pocket lint and pennies. So yep. it, it's our way of it's still a donation. They can donate more, but we make it reasonable. We, we house a lot of kids. The high school is just down the road. And so we have an open door for them here oh, in the cool. depot where they can bring the, the, the photography groups or the history oh, nice. groups anytime can just walk over and we, we facilitate them. And, but we do the full guided tours for 10 and then all the paranormal partners do uh, set their rates based on, you know, the, the, all the countless things that they add, add to the mix as well. Okay. We want to be a place where people can come and be. So we, we try to make it a good deal for them and a good deal for us. And we actually have a lot of people that have come on the, the shorter self-guided tours and they're so intrigued mm-hmm. that they will turn around and come out yeah. of our book paranormal investigation. We had a group yesterday and they needed air out front for a while and then they just went back in and now they're book they're booking. I don't know how I told you that, but um they were so impressed with with just being in the facility, unbothered. You know, we, we check yeah. on and make sure they're okay obviously, but we try to let people experience the jail and then we frisk them on the way out and so (laughs) is is the best way for people to find information and to reach out to you guys through the phone number or and the facebook page exactly for the jail yeah absolutely the facebook page primarily and then we have the the 480 phone number and um in our messenger boxes as well and um you know we have 13 different downtown historic pages so tour requests come through through the chamber and through everywhere else but we try to you know just keep to our Facebook page right now and we're reworking the website. So eventually we'll tag that in as well. And a lot of people call the real jail because there is an existing <laughs> Healy County jail. So they call yeah. me all the time. I try to give the guys free tours for themselves, you know, just to make it up to them. But. <laughs> and uh, do you guys have any events coming up there at the jail that you'd like to talk about briefly? Yeah. Coming up April 22nd is mm-hmm. our second Paracon. Ghost and of yeah, Ghost of Bow Paracon. And um, I'm just hostess, but the teams, uh, it's run by Vincent Amico, and he does a regular second Saturday's paranormal event here and, and does tickets. But he's put together some amazing uh, writers and talent and mediums and you name it. And they also have a big, um, the train depot, they're going to have the whole uh, lot for vendors and. Oh, fun. Um, and they have everything. They have a huge schedule for that going on. Um, and then we also have our Ghost of Globe tour in October. We have tons of stuff in between. Wonderful. But the, those are the big daddies. Um, our 25th annual Ghost of Globe um, oh, cool. tour. Will, and it's always the Saturday before Halloween. Um, and that is just amazing. Of course, amazing. our cemetery tour and the rest will happen in between. But those are our major majors that. 
And then uh, we will be at the Ghosts of Globe Paracom as vendors and speakers. And to, to reach us, you can just go on to our website, azghostadventures.com. And then our social media, the, that's to RSVP and to see what we have coming up because we go throughout Globe, Miami, um, Cave Creek, which is near Scottsdale. We do community service events. Um, and so we always do community service events for the Cave Creek Museum. Uh, we are out in Stanton, Oracle, where there's, there's an old TV sanatorium. So yeah, we, we, we're, we're all over the place. Uh, but our social media sites are Facebook, AZ Ghost Adventures. That's our private site. And then our public site is AZ Ghost Adventures Evidence and Discussion. That's where people can, and they don't have to have been on one of our investigations. They can just post evidence or questions or, you know, funny things. Um, so we, you know, we want a place where people can feel that they can contribute to it. We also have... Uh, Instagram, AZ Ghost Adventures, and TikTok, AZ Ghost Adventures. Pretty easy, right? Yeah, you can find it, right? And, um, and then we We're have noticing a theme. we use also Arizona Hauntings and the Supernatural. And um, so, you know, we're trying, we're trying to expand it out so everyone has opportunities to, to participate on those sites. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think did I touch on everything that I need? Yeah, I think so. I think so. And yeah. she's so good to our our firemen and police officers and veterans and um, she we, does special events yeah, for them we as well. do so offer we, we love yeah additionally all of that at time of reservation we offer a 10 percent discount for all first responders military oh, cool. firemen yeah veterans uh and um we try to do as many community service events as possible i know we've awesome. done some uh like pro bono of investigations and tours for the city of globe um, and like toy I said, we yeah, we do for Miami every yeah. year. We do an annual toy fundraising drive for Miami, Arizona, which is the sister city right mm -hmm. next to where Bullion Plaza is. Cool. And we get the community involved and all of the people who attend our investigations. They bring something. Um, we do a lot of raffles, a lot of drawings, a lot of baskets donated. So it, it's been it's been a wonderful relationship. Very good. Every everyone's just benefiting and doing yeah. well and yeah. learning nice so. and that's what it should be it should be that collaborative effort exactly. um, in, in order for that that historic preservation to really take hold absolutely, oh, absolutely. yeah yeah very very awesome well you you guys have been a tremendous source of information oh. um <laughs> about your jail about the the community and thank you so much we really do appreciate you joining us tonight and absolutely it was nice meeting both of you yeah. and if you ever want to come out for an investigation yeah. We will be there. You know someone that can help you. I know. <laughs> well, likewise, <laughs> if, you, if, you, if you ever want to come to Tennessee, you've got to welcome oh, the invitation. Love it. And I do have to say the accents just make my heart happy. <laughs> <laughs> we probably have the accents to you, yeah. but yeah. Miranda's got the accent. I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> She's a transplant. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Oh, yes. thank you so much for inviting us. We've Absolutely. Absolutely. And, and thank you all over in the chat room for your mm -hmm. comments and your questions. We've tried to put all of the different links and the phone numbers over there and highlight them during the show. Once this posts, this will post uh, a rebroadcast on mm -hmm. our YouTube page. And so uh, it will have the live links there in the show notes as well as whenever people go back on Facebook, they'll be able to quick access these. So um, so guys definitely go and check, check these, uh, the, the location out as well as the teams and, uh, look at some of the different evidence and some of the different Absolutely stories fair. and stuff. So, <laughs> um, so if you guys will stick around a few more minutes, we're going to, uh, wrap things up. So we'll pull you back screen and then, uh, we'll talk to you right after we wrap this up, if that's okay. Right. That's great. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Wow. Love their enthusiasm. They've got a lot of enthusiasm for their town, for their jail, for their history. Uh, they're, they're a pleasure to speak with. Absolutely. You know, I've, I really love this series that we've been doing mm -hmm. with these different jails, you know, Agreed. just because we've been we've been able to 
hit a lot of the East Coast here and a few in uh, uh, the central states there and then taking it on over West. I hope we're able to get some more locations there out West and maybe even some international locations. Absolutely. Well, we're plugging away. We're trying to find them. So if anybody knows of a jail that they'd like us to cover, just let us know and we'll try to reach out to them and see if we can get them on the podcast for sure. Um, but thank you all, as Miranda said, thank you all in the chat room for joining us tonight, asking all of your questions. Uh, we've got a very busy week coming up. I know Miranda's in the middle of her move still, but we've got a lot of stuff coming up at the jail. Sally says hello again. Um, so uh, we do have a lot of stuff coming up at uh, up at the jail this weekend. We've got paranormal investigations. We will Both have our, yeah. yeah, we'll have our flashlight tours up. Um, and uh, it, I, I think we're going to make some really cool announcements here again. Uh, just hang on just a little bit longer. Yeah. Next week we, we will. So we will be live, but we're going to be actually having That's a right. pre-recorded show next Sunday night. So of course, next Sunday is Easter. And uh, we hope that uh, after you've, you know, eaten your, your church potluck meals and all that good stuff and hunted your Easter eggs and had your family time, we hope that you will tune in next Sunday at 8 p.m. Eastern because we have a very, very special show. Um, two weeks ago, we were able to sit down, actually last week, last week mm -hmm. we were able to sit down with Christian contemporary music artist um, and Sony uh, artist uh, Ben Fuller. We were able to sit down with him, do this wonderful, wonderful interview. If, uh, if you've been following the jail, you probably saw the video that he filmed there at the jail. He was able to sit down and talk to us about his testimony as well as his background with, um, you know, as, as a, a musician and then also as uh, uh, what, compelled him to uh, to write the song as well as his uh, testimony um we're gonna be covering all of that and uh some some really cool stuff but we will be yeah. live essentially manning that mm -hmm. uh, but it will be a pre-recorded interview and so we're we want to thank everyone that's provided us with questions and because mm -hmm. uh, we were able to highlight those during the interview yeah, so it was a great interview. I think everybody will really enjoy it. Uh, he was, as Miranda said, just a wealth of knowledge about his testimony and his journey and uh, what it was like filming here at the jail. So please tune in for that next Sunday. Absolutely. And Candace, so. definitely uh, check out these ladies. She says she's from Arizona and never knew that the jail was open for investigation. So definitely reach out to uh uh, those folks. Um, and again, we'll have some different stuff going on, different posts and announcements and everything through the week that, uh, you know, hopefully you guys will stay tuned for. Um, and is, and like I said, uh, we've got a couple other locations lined up after next weekend. Um, I think we've got Harry Millman that's going to be on the show uh, after Ben Fuller. And then we'll be back on our, our jailhouse series. Yep. Well, again, thank you everybody for joining us tonight and for all the comments and the support. We really do appreciate it. And we hope you all have a blessed evening. Thank you, everyone. Good night. Mm -hmm.